Okay, well, one thing I would love to hear a little more about from you is some of the research done in humans that further illustrates what you're talking about. So there was a recent study done by Kevin Hall where he worked with humans. He compared a animal-based ketogenic diet and a plant-based diet. So what did that study show? So I think, you know, when we are going to look at human research, it's important that whenever possible, we use high quality studies to illustrate our points. And what I'm about to share with you is about as high quality as you could possibly have. Because like what we eat on a daily basis and trying to measure that in a research study is extremely difficult. But if you take a person and you actually control the flow of food, <laughs> then you know exactly what they're eating. And in this Kevin Hall study, Kevin Hall is a researcher in the metabolism unit at the National Institutes of Health. And he conducted a study where he had people who actually agreed to enter into a metabolic ward, which basically means that they like left their normal day-to-day -day life and they entered into effectively a hospital. And Kevin Hall had control over what was on the food tray that was delivered to their room every day. And in this study, people did two weeks on a completely whole food plant-based diet versus two weeks on a completely animal product-based ketogenic diet. All right, so each person got both diets. So we get to see within the individual, like, you know, for me, like comparing me two weeks on each, how does my body do? Let's see. And in this study, they were basically told, consume as much as you want, like eat until you're full. No restrictions. We're not counting calories. This is like the real world. Just eat until you feel full. So here's what happens. Okay. If you're wondering, do people lose weight on a ketogenic diet? The answer to that question is yes. In this study, people very rapidly lost weight on the ketogenic diet. So if you want to lose weight, cool. Uh, ketogenic diet can help you lose weight. But there is a caveat that you guys need to know about. And that is that they were not losing fat. And I'm pretty sure when we talk about losing weight, most people actually are referring to losing fat. That's what we're trying to get rid of. In this study, the weight that was lost, which by the way was lost very quickly in the first like 48 to 72 hours, the weight that was lost was water or muscle mass. Meanwhile, on the whole food plant-based diet, in just two weeks, there was a consistent level of fat loss. People were actually burning fat on a whole food plant-based diet. And they ate until they were full. And what's interesting is that in this study, they achieved the same level of satiety. Basically what I'm saying is they, they ate until they felt full and they were satisfied. They achieved the same level of satiety on both diets, but every single person, there was no outlier, not even one. Every single person in the study consumed less calories on a plant-based diet. The average was 689 calories per day. What that means is that in about five days, you lose a pound on a plant-based diet. Now, let's move towards talking about, so that's like fascinating. If you want to lose fat, eat plant-based and eat until you're full. I'm actually really glad to hear you talk about this study because we actually have highlighted this study in some talks that we've given in public. And when I first read this study, I was like, wow. It's incredible that you can, you know, the, the narrative in the world of ketogenic diets is that a ketogenic diet is like a rapid weight loss tool. And that if you eat a ketogenic diet, you will lose weight and you will lose weight quickly. And, and that happens to a lot of people. That's what their experience truly is. But just like you said, people don't want to lose weight 
and lose muscle mass. They're not looking to lose lean body tissue. What they're looking to lose is they're looking to lose fat mass. So if you actually go underneath the hood and say, okay, fine, you're losing weight, but you're actually losing a larger proportion of lean body mass, AKA muscle, when you eat a ketogenic diet, than you would be if you were eating a plant-based diet. So you can get an equivalent amount of weight loss. You just tend to lose more fat with a plant-based diet and more muscle with a ketogenic diet. But I think the general public just is unaware of this actual research finding. Yeah, and when the key here is that this is, there is no bias. This is Kevin Hall, who's an NIH metabolism researcher, who has people that are going into a metabolic ward. Kevin Hall is not trying to prove one thing or another. He's just trying to see how does a plant-based diet compare to a, an animal-based ketogenic diet because so many people are trying to, you know, make an argument. Well, let's stop arguing. Let's just let's just see what the result is. So, and you know, yeah, it's like you said, Cyrus. If you want to lose if you want to lose muscle mass and dehydrate yourself, go keto. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, um, and uh, so, but what's interesting is that a ketogenic diet, obviously, is a high fat diet. 70% fat. Low carb, 5 to 10% carbs typically. And in the case of a animal-based keto, that fat is going to be predominantly saturated fat. So like in this study, for every 1,000 calories that you consumed, there was 25 grams of saturated fat. Well, that's a lot. You know, you eat 2,000 calories in a day, 50 grams, 3,000 calories, 75 grams of saturated fat in a day. That's ridiculous. The plant-based diet was literally like 6% of that. All right. So if what I'm telling you is true, that saturated fat and trans fats drive up free fatty acids and that due to lipotoxicity, we become less capable of dealing with these, this, these free fatty acids and therefore dysregulate our blood sugar because of the effects of lipotoxicity on our muscle tissue, on our liver and on our pancreas. If that is true, then we should see that in this Kevin Hall study. Even though it's only two weeks, we should see that. Now, these are not people who had diabetes. All right. These are regular people. And the body mass index, I believe, was an average of about 28, which is overweight but not obese. But in just two weeks on an animal-based ketogenic diet. When these people were administered a standardized glucose tolerance test, they had a blood sugar that was 30 points higher one hour after being administered glucose after consuming the animal-based ketogenic diet. It's the exact same person the exact same person, but with two different diets. And when you choose keto, you drive your blood sugar up by an additional 30 points because of insulin resistance and lipotoxicity as a result of the ridiculous amounts of saturated fat. Correct. It's the one-two punch. Come at me. <laughs> Come at me. It's the one-two punch, exactly what you're saying, which is that, you know, the diabetes world, and I should say the, the world of blood glucose management, the world of blood sugar management likes to talk about the culprit, the villain in the world of, you know, the, the thing that spikes your blood sugar or your blood glucose is sugar. They say, if you eat sugar, your blood glucose will go up. If you eat sugar, you're going to get fatty liver disease. If you eat sugar, your cholesterol is going to go up. If you eat sugar, you're going to gain weight. And um, so people are sort of preconditioned to believe that like anything that contains sugar, including foods that contain carbohydrates, because carbohydrates will metabolize into sugar, that's the culprit. It's too simplistic of an argument. And, and the truth is that when you're talking about refined sugar versus whole carbohydrate rich foods, such as what we're discussing, which is uh, fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes and whole grains, the two of them are fundamentally different species, right? So the, the point that I'm trying to bring up here is that this idea is that, yeah, you know, carbohydrates have many different, you know, two different general classes. You got the refined carbohydrates and the whole carbohydrates. 
You're not saying eat refined carbohydrates. I'm not saying eat refined carbohydrates. Robbie's not saying that. The top doctors aren't saying that either. Nobody is really advocating on eating more refined carbohydrates. But the research actually shows that by eating more whole carbohydrate rich food, you can actually derive a number of important metabolic advantages. One of them being that the existing fat inside of your liver and muscles and kidney and heart uh, will go down over the course of time. And when that happens, it relieves a lot of the pressure that these tissues experience because they've accumulated excess fat over the course of time. So excess fat leads to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance leads to a traffic jam inside of those tissues such that when you do eat something that's carbohydrate rich, boom, your blood glucose goes through the roof. And then you say, huh, I guess bananas are bad for me. I guess mangoes are bad for me. I guess quinoa is bad for me because I ate it and my glucose went up. But in reality, the answer is no, no, no. It's not the quinoa's fault. It's not the banana's fault. It's because there was already a pre-existing traffic jam inside of those, inside of your muscles and liver in particular. So clear up the traffic jam first and then go ahead and put that whole carbohydrate rich food into your mouth again and watch as your blood glucose becomes rock solid. Right. Right. Well, it's, it's kind of like this. Um, I would make an analogy to imagine that you have a messed up knee, right? Like you have messed up your knee. You have two choices of how to handle this. If you have pain in your knee, you can either go through rehab and I will assure you that going through rehab, you will experience some pain, but when you emerge on the other side, you will be able to start playing basketball again. All right. If that's what you like to do, that's what I like to do. Or you can make the decision. I never want to feel pain in my knee again. And I'm going to stop walking. Right. And so in making that choice, you never walk again. You never feel that pain, but then you don't, you don't get to play basketball. Right. Let's not pretend that you fixed the problem by stop walking. Because that's not true. You fixed the problem when you're actually capable of going out on that court and playing basketball again. That's when you know that your knee is actually healthy. A person does not reverse diabetes by eliminating carbohydrates. Eliminating carbohydrates is functionally the equivalent of saying, I'm not going to walk anymore because I don't want to feel that pain. But if you want to actually heal the knee, if you want to heal the metabolism, the solution is not to eliminate carbohydrates. The solution instead is to double, triple, quadruple down on carbohydrates, but actually in the, in the form of whole plant foods. Reverse the insulin resistance, reverse the lipotoxicity, restore balance, get your metabolic health back, and now you can eat these foods without restriction. And that is like playing basketball again. You don't have to restrict your carbs. You can consume whatever the heck you want. And guess what? Because you're metabolically healthy and you've eliminated your insulin resistance, you can consume it and you still have your blood sugar under control. Boom. That's what we want. That's the solution we're looking for, Will. Absolutely. The whole thing.